Hi folks, I'm Ian Baker and today we're going to go over the 2020 KZ Connect SE 312BHK. I know it's a mouthful of a name and it's also a fairly large unit. This is a triple bunkhouse model. You have a true bunkhouse in the back, meaning that you have the three bunks back there with the door to be able to close it off so they have their separate space. Plus a big super slide here with a sofa and a U-shaped dinette giving you not just great sitting space, but also uh, excellent additional sleeping space and the camp side kitchen, which will actually start with that. So one of the things you'll notice right away is the countertop itself. Rather than being a T-mold, it is an upgraded style of countertop. It's generally called seamless or like a thermal foil countertop. And what they basically do is they put this, uh, this skin kind of on top of it, but it allows you to undermount the bowl. It's also a lot more resilient than your T-mold. You don't have anything popping off here, which is great. And I like the look. Plus, if you do get sink top covers, they're almost flush, which I definitely prefer. You will see the large single bowl stainless steel sink and high rise faucet as well. You have some good prep space right here, which I enjoy. You'll also see that your uh, electrical outlet right over to the side is right next to this big open space. So that way, you know, if you have like a coffee maker or something there, it's a perfect spot for it. Kind of wish they would have put another one right here personally, but at least you do have the one, which is almost necessary. Over to the side, you will see the three burner recessed cooktop. It has the glass cover. So you can fold that up and back just like so, which gives you the backsplash there. Gives you access to those three burners. The front one is high output. Because it's a Furion, the knobs light, light up like so. And you'll see right underneath, you also have an oven if you want to do some baking. Now underneath that, you have this big drawer, which is awesome for some of your pots and pans. Plus three very large full extension ball bearing drawers for all of your flatware and some of your larger utensils like serving spoons, spatulas, things like that. Up along the top, again, more storage there, plus you have the microwave and hood. You'll also see right up front, you have another door here, which is access to all this space underneath. So again, you know, a great, excellent uh, kitchen storage space there. To take a quick look up at the ceiling, I do want to show that this one has ducted AC with the quick dump, so you can open the vents up right here to have basically all the cool air dump in this main area or close it off and have it run to the rest of the camper. As for the heat, you do have the in-floor heating uh, ductwork. Rather than having it come through the cabinets, it is right in the floor. Kind of rounding out the kitchen, you have the Everchill compressor-driven refrigerator. These are fantastic because they do cool down much, much quicker than your standard RV fridge. You'll see the big freezer right up top here. The thermostat is right in there. Uh, of course, this is for the freezer. You have another one right here for the fridge. Um, the thing I like about this though, is that if this basically can run off your batteries. And if you have some solar panels or something that you've, uh, that you've put on here, you can, with two batteries, you can actually run this almost continuously, which is pretty wonderful. Right next to that, you will see the large pantry. So you can fit plenty of items in there. Can definitely appreciate that. And making our way around to the back here, thermostat is located right on the wall. You'll see that this does control both your heat as well as your AC. Directly across from the bathroom, you have this storage space. Now you can use this as a linen closet if you want, or you can use it as extra pantry space. You can use it as more storage space for kids' clothes. Really, whatever, uh, whatever fits your needs the most. As we take a step into the bathroom, You'll notice how it is quite open. Foot flush lever toilet. Uh, it is, you know, it's not too bad. I have pretty decent room here. I am rubbing on both sides, but again, uh, it's definitely pretty decent size space. And at six foot tall, I have more than enough leg room. Over to the side is the sink top. You have plumbing access underneath, mirrored medicine cabinet with storage right up top. Turn the loops, light switch, there we go. Turn the light on for you. Uh, so good storage up top there. Secondary entrance. I do really like this, especially when you have kiddos because, you know, at least mine, it seems like they always have to use the bathroom when we're camping. So this allows them to come right in, use the toilet and head right back out without bringing dirt all the way through the entire camper. It's also worth mentioning that your tank monitoring panel is in here. It's always good to know where that's at. And uh, you'll see that there are two switches for the water heater. Run to have it, one to have it run on propane, the other with electric. You can turn on both those at the same time for faster recovery. 
And if we take a step into the shower again, I am six foot tall. So even without the skylight, you'll see I pretty much max out the ceiling there, but I can still do it with that skylight. Gives you a couple extra inches. And folks, this is a very large shower, especially in comparison to uh, a lot of your RV showers. You can see I have decent am amount of space to actually turn around here, which I certainly enjoy. And you have the hand wand just to make showering up that much easier. Now, as we step back out, we'll actually head to the back. And this is our bunk room three bunks back here the first one being in the form of your fold up top bunk so you can fold that up that way you have a little more headroom here at the dinette now bear in mind with with this style of bunk folks whoever sits inside is going to have to be a little bit shorter right because otherwise even with it folded up i mean you can see that you're still gonna you're still gonna touch but that's not just this model that's pretty much any model where you have the flip up bunk however to the outside you know, again, as an adult, I have plenty of room, which is great. The thing I love about this, though, about having the dinette on this side is it gives the kids a space where, you know, they can, again, they can sit down, they can eat back here if they want. They can play games, right? Rather than just video games, they can sit here and, you know, maybe play Monopoly if they want to uh, spend a week playing that or whatever other board game you may have. Uh, I just enjoy the fact that they have kind of their own little private space. And that, of course, does drop down into a bed. That will be your second bunk right there. There is an electrical outlet in the back, so if they make a mess, you need to plug in a vacuum, you have a spot to do that. Now, on the camp side is your third bunk. This is the biggest of the bunks. You can see how nice and wide this one is. You also have dual USB ports up here in case you need to plug any electronics. Spot for a TV there with the appropriate connections. A couple of drawers underneath. Open that up just to give you an idea of size so you can kind of see what you're working with. And right over to the side, more storage for clothes here. Now, I personally would have liked them to have put in like a, a hanging rod here and had a removable shelf in case I wanted to hang clothes. But as long as you fold all your clothes again, there is great additional storage underneath this bunk. And as we make our way back out into the main living area, you'll see the super slide right over here. And as I previously mentioned when we opened the video, you have that big U-shaped dinette. Now, a lot of people are under the misconception that a U dinette can seat more people, and that's not generally the case. Usually, most U dinettes you can still only sit four people, sometimes five, very, very rarely six. Um, but again, most of them are built for four, and this is why. Even though it is a lot larger, if you have more than four people, you'll start hitting each other's knees. So you can kind of have one person on each end, two right here in the center. However, what a U dinette is great for is additional sleeping space because it is so much longer. You can drop this table down and you can sleep at least one. You know, if there are two people that are comfortable snuggling, you can sleep two adults there, which is pretty wonderful. Uh, if you take a look underneath the seats, you will see easy access storage there. And over to the side is your sofa. So this is a jackknife style sofa. The big advantage of a jackknife is all the storage underneath. This again drops down into a bed, but it, you know most adults would have to curl up a little bit to be able to sleep there. If you have a kiddo though, that is a great space. You'll see in lieu of storage above the sofa, they went with a larger window, which really lets a lot of natural light into this main living area. And then here you have the half wall kind of separating your bedroom. You'll see storage all along the side, perfect for a DVD collection. You have a, um, a backer right here in the wall, so you know where to mount the TV, connections for it right up top. And this one does have a DVD player. I know it's old style cables. I agree it should be an HDMI, but uh, you know, you, you run with what you got. So you're probably not gonna watch anything in HD, but it, you can still plug that in, still watch DVDs right here. This also controls your speakers inside and outside. It's Bluetooth capable. You have storage both up top as well as right down below. And as you make way into the very front, of course, you have the master bedroom. Queen bed here in the center. You'll see there is storage underneath that is strut supported as well for easy access into that space. Both sides are mirrored wardrobes with the hanging rod, a shelf going across the top for a little bit of extra storage up there. You have windows on both sides. If you want TV in the bedroom, there is another backer located right here, so you can mount one there. And at the very foot of the bed is your slider pocket door. So with the slide closed up, you can see you can still kind of sneak around right here. You have a little bit of a walkway. So that way, if you want to come in, you know, pull off on the side of the road and access the refrigerator, you can do that. You have full access to both the fridge and the freezer. As for the bathroom, you will be closed off from this entrance. But remember, there is a second entrance on this one that goes right into that bathroom. The bunk room will certainly, however, be closed off to you. Now that we've seen the insides, take a look at some of the outside features on the 2020 Connect SE 312 BHK. 
Right up front is a power tongue jack, making it a lot easier to hook up and disconnect this unit from your tow vehicle. Just flip the switch here to raise and lower the tongue. Also, you have a light fretted visibility at night and a manual override in the rare event that the motor does fail. Right behind that are two 20 pound propane tanks with a cover, rails for your battery and a battery disconnect switch there so that way you can just kill all power to the RV, which is wonderful when it's not in use. You will also see the diamond etch plating up the front, helping to protect the front end from some of the rocks and debris that may get thrown up by your tow vehicle. Coming around to the side, this one is prepped for solar. So if you want solar, simply buy the portable panels, which have the uh, controller built right into the back of the panels. You can plug them in right there. Everything's already pre-wired and that will trickle charge your battery. For the pass-through, you'll notice the covered hinge, so you don't have a bunch of rust coming down your door. It's also a magnetic catch and utilizes the key-alike system, meaning that your pass-through is much more secure because it's a unique key. It's not a 751 key like you've seen in the past that everyone else has. If you take a look inside, you'll see how nice and open that pass-through is as well. Of course, you have an LED light to help brighten things up. And you have the large baggage doors here, so that way if you have uh, some bigger chairs, grills, things like that, you're actually able to fit them in the pass-through. The awning does cover both entrances, which is great. Of course, it is a power awning, so simply touch a button to roll that out. Same thing to go back in, and you have the LED light strip for light at night there. And uh, as I mentioned, two entrances. Both of them are essentially the same. You have the standard three fold-out steps with the grip tape on there and the grab handle for a little added traction when entering or exiting the RV. Again, the Kia-like system on the doors as well. There is a fully enclosed underbelly underneath, which will help keep out some of the rodents in the off season, as well as uh, a lot of the road grime and dirt from traveling down the road. Plus, hopefully it'll help keep things a little bit toastier down there in some of the colder temperatures. You'll also see an outside electrical outlet in case you need to plug anything in. And right up above that are your two outside speakers, but as I mentioned, those are connected to that multimedia center inside. Secondary entrance right here, this one goes right into the bathroom, same setup as your primary entrance. Black tank flush here, so that way you can quickly and easily wash out the black tank without having to stick a hose down your toilet. Outside shower with hot and cold water access located directly underneath that. And of course, one of my favorite things about having a bunkhouse is the outside kitchen. Nice big dormer refrigerator here, so that way you have plenty of space for condiments, beverages, whatever else you want to toss out there. Easy access storage right up top. You'll see enclosed storage here. You kind of have that uh, shiplap looking wallpaper on the back, which I like. Electrical outlet off to the side, plumbed sink there. Some additional storage, you can open that guy up. You'll see the uh, little hose right here with the your spray nozzle, but again, uh, good extra storage area there. And we'll pull this guy out. You'll see this actually comes with a capital grill. And I personally like this because it's kind of a, a two-in-one. You can use this as a cooktop if you want, or you can use it as a grill. And for me, when I'm cooking outside, I'm generally grilling more than I'm using the cooktop, so I like the versatility there. Coming around to the back side, square tubular bumpers with end caps give you a convenient spot in which you can store the sewer hose. You'll see right here is your spare tire. Nice and easy to access. You don't have to get down underneath the camper or anything like that. Right up top is your backup camera prep. So if you want a backup camera, having the prep makes it easier to install. And right back here, you will see your cable and satellite inlets. Last couple things on the off door side. Now I do have this slide in, so normally this will be right in between your two slide outs, but you will see your 50 amp detachable power cord plugs right into there. Underneath is your termination with both your black and gray tank valves. And as we make our way up to the very front, you will see both the water inlets. Right up top is your fresh tank fill. If you plan on going somewhere you don't have city water, and if you do have city water, you'll fill it right underneath. All right, folks, and that wraps it up. Again, this is the 2020 Connect SE 312BHK. If you're interested in this family travel trailer and you would like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description below. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.